Some people hope that whenever they get behind the wheel of a car, it will automatically just kind of float through the air, avoiding all of the other dangers. The sad news is that cars never get airborne. Unless they're about to roll over. We're going to tip it. And in this rehab center, I was about to flip. cars are airborne all the time. Oh! We're going to tip. This is Canada's worst driver. We didn't find the nominees for Canada's Worst Driver. Their loved ones found us. My name is Teresa, and I nominated my distracted friend, Crystal, as Canada's Worst Driver. In Windsor, Ontario, Crystal works with a business selling tents and awnings. Windsor Tent Awning. And she conducts a lot of her business. I think I just missed a message. From her car. I think I'm vibrating. Hello. I've probably been in, I don't know, 18 or more accidents. Oh, Crystal says she needs to keep driving. Oh, he's pissed at you. Who, this guy? Because her job depends on it. I don't Who's know. calling me? I need my license. I have to have my license. My name's Christine, and I've nominated Angelina for Canada's Worst Driver. Where's my sweater? In Sudbury. Ah! Oh, oh, my God! Unemployed Angelina drives a lot. Oh, my God! I need to drive because I hate the bus. Every day, Angelina has to go to the gym, grab a coffee, pick up cosmetics, visit her niece, get a burger, hit the tanning booth, and then go shopping. Why are you crying? Because I'm freaking out. My name is Sana, and I nominated my husband, Arun, for Canada's Worst Driver. Arun and Sana are students in Windsor. When they settled in together, Santa didn't realize her daily drive to the university would be this hairy. I married him before I realized he was a bad driver. Arun knows he's bad. That's why he agreed to rehab. Oh. Are you fixable? Either I'm fixable or I'm quitting driving. My name is Guy, and I nominated my brother, Father Giles, as Canada's worst driver. In Richmond, Ontario, Father Giles is a priest at two separate churches. Are we there yet? No, not yet. When he's not causing traffic jams between his two churches... Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty, right? Father Giles drives very slowly to parishioners' homes. And how's, how's the little kitty cat? Oh, she's a little devil. Heaven knows. Father Giles needs his license. My name is Will. I've nominated my girlfriend, Melissa, as Canada's worst driver. Back up, for sakes. In St. John, New Brunswick... Don't crank the wheel! Melissa recently got her license for the good of the family. Yes. But whenever Melissa drives the family... Keep the wheel. It's not good. I sometimes get scared when my mom and dad are both in the car because then my dad starts like yelling at my mom if she does something wrong. Melissa, watch your mirrors. Man. My name is Stacy, and I nominate my driving boyfriend, Jacob, for Canada's Worst Driver. Get the out of my way! In Charlottetown, Jacob is the driving force behind this PEI punk band. I drive the truck to all the local shows, all the maritime shows. Nobody else has, like, the vehicles that is, is theirs. If I didn't have my license, then the rock would stop, yeah. My name's Jody, and I nominated... My brother-in-law, Mike, as Canada's worst driver. At home in Regina, 
Mike leaves the house in pursuit of fun. Watch me piss this guy off in the Impala. Pissing people off is why I'm on Earth. I just feed off their... Ah! Hi! It's a shame there's no student drivers around. Have some fun with them. Last episode, one nominee graduated back onto public streets. JoJo. Congratulations, <laughs> JoJo. At the end of this episode, one more candidate will be allowed to leave our rehab center and go home. I think maybe I, I may be next. I hope I'm next. To decide who stays and who goes, we've got a panel of expert car nuts. They are Chief Driving Instructor Peter Mellor, our High Performance Instructor Philippe Letourneau, Race Car Driving Psychologist Dr. Luisa Gambora, and former Sergeant on the Ontario Provincial Police Force, Mr. Cam Woolley. Last episode, we had Canada's worst drivers reverse around a figure eight track in a stretch limousine. Drive it! Stop the car! The results were shocking, even for our standards. Get me out of here. Oh. With the reverse figure eight going so badly last episode, we thought it was only right to do it again. But this time, Drivers will be competing against each other head to head. Or actually the Actually they'll be going rear to rear, as it were. At the start point, the two vehicles are head to head. But by the time Canada's worst drivers explore this full figure challenge, their vehicles will end up rear to rear. Allow me to demonstrate. You ready, Philippe? All set. All right. Now. Now, I drive backwards as fast as I safely can without ever leaving my lane. But the other driver is in the same lane, which will create a problem for all the bad motorists. Eventually, they're going to have to pass the other vehicle. And to do that, there's not enough space except for one spot on the course. And that magical spot is not right here. I think we have an issue. Clearly. <laughs> to resolve it, Philippe and I get out and find the slightly wider passing zone. I'll take the inside. Okay, I'm there, you're there. Piece of cake. Fair enough. Yep. When we get both vehicles to the correct area... Oh, I do need to reposition. Just hold still, Philippe, hold still. No problem. A little bit of patience gets us past each other. Piece of cake, eh? See you later. As we head for the finish line, I have almost no ground to cover, but Philippe still has to make it all this way. Ha ha ha! I just beat Philippe, our high speed expert, in what's well, not a race, it's a driving experiment and a challenge that's going to make Canada's worst drivers better at reversing. I'm done! 45 seconds ahead of Philippe. What a slow poke. Yeah, I guess I'm going to retire soon. <laughs> yeah, I would guess. Up first is Crystal and Arun. Go! Who get off to a slow start. I shouldn't hit anything. That's the point. Three minutes in. Crystal's knocking down rims, and Arun's gone one whole car length. Arun inches around, I'll correct that, he, he centimeters around, he millimeters around. To impress Santa, Arun tries going faster. Faster, faster. It's going faster. <laughs> it is fast. What are you laughing for? After 16 minutes on the track, Arun and Crystal meet. You better get the hell out of my way. What? What's that pushing for? Go ahead. This is my laneway. She's in your lane? Yeah. Jockeying for position. Bumpers get scratched. And egos get bruised. Uh, I, I give up. 
Are you ever going to learn how to do this? Are you ever? I know, I learned it. Already. No, you're not learning it. Santa checks the course out on foot, and now. What is it you're trying to do? You have to get out of the car. Just come. Huh? Santa understands the passing area is right here. When the drivers pass each other, she's there, Crystal. Arun is disoriented. Does that mean knocking stuff off? And Crystal is reversing without looking. Getting something. Backing over the finish line. Where's our sign? Crystal is lost, and Arun is even further behind. That was a bad one, eh? Ah,、uh, I think it was a little bit hard for me. Why is it so hard for you? Can't you just drive backwards? To get faster, Arun needs to experience faster. I'm gonna look where I want to go, which is straight back here, right? And I got a floor, right? Watch this, straight as an arrow, right? Locking your vision in one faraway spot will draw you automatically to that spot. Arun's freaking out as a passenger. I don't know how he's gonna do this as a driver. He does it by starting slow in a wide open area. This is the fastest you've ever gone right here, all right? Yeah. So just hold this speed. See? You just yeah, look、okay. at something and you go there. That's right? right. Exactly. I looked at the purple and it went towards that. On his fourth run, Arun finds the courage to floor it, but that scares Santa. Break. And that scares him. Break. Break. I, 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 okay. What I did was, when she said break, I looked at her. The car went this way. That's what a distraction can do. Keep your eyes on、exactly. the road and your hands upon the wheel. The door being opened in this lesson will never shut. I saw you drive backwards really fast. <laughs> yeah, I got a chance to drive backwards at seventy kilometers an hour. That's so cool. Yeah. When we come back, Father Giles nearly kills me. <laughs> Canada's worst drivers are reversing against one another on a figure eight track. Are you ever going to learn how to do this, Melissa? And Father Giles are next. While Father Giles contemplates how God could have created something as beautiful as an automatic transmission sedan, Melissa is in hell. This is ridiculous. Don't turn the wheel like that, for sakes, man. So crank it your way a little bit, <sighs> Melissa. Stop cranking the wheel. You know what? I don't think we've had any passenger as rude and obnoxious as this fellow is. Well, well, so you gotta well, turn the wheel、okay. like this. Well, I was cranking it, and you told me not to. The only thing more crushing than Will's energy is Father Giles's sedan. Whoa, whoa! Stop! Stop! I think he must have put his foot on on the gas instead of the brake. That's exactly what happened. Father Giles got in trouble, then stomped on the gas pedal. The only reason Father Giles didn't keep going is that his vehicle got hung up on a rim. Ah, Father Giles needs a breather. Ah. Melissa needs a breather too. Turn the wheel. But you weren't gonna swear and yell at me, well. Well, Melissa, like this is. I'd be interested to see how Melissa does without him at all in the car. I bet you she'd do better. All right, let's play music and chairs. With me in the front seat, Melissa steers clear of everything. That's it. Exactly. That's steering. That's it, Melissa. Look at that. If Will is completely banished, will Melissa drive even better? Just stay out of the car for a sec, Will. Will looms close by, but as soon as Melissa gets away from him, she drives flawlessly. Look, look, see, perfect. Look at you. 
I just get so stressed out. Will would stress out the Dalai Lama. That man is your biggest problem in the car. Melissa has Canada's worst passenger. In five years of this show, you are yep. the worst passenger. You're the cause of her bad driving. Yep. Up next is Mike and Angelina. I'm going to drink a coffee. Go! I always tell drivers to go as fast as they can. As fast as I can. Hey, 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 hey,
Are you going to start wearing hush puppies and pleated pants? <laughs> yeah. All golf shirts all the time. When we come back, there's a maneuvering challenge and a road sign test. What the f I an axe. Do you know what these road signs mean? Last year, the province of Ontario manufactured 73,000 road signs at a cost of $3 million. But if people don't understand what they mean, they're not getting the information they paid for. Play along now and see how many of these images you understand as Canada's worst drivers try to decipher road signs. You're driving along and you see that sign at the side of the road. What's it telling you? I don't know. I've never seen this before. I think... I don't know. Does the orange color give you a clue? Orange? No. Are the color supposed to mean something? Yes. Orange signs always relate to construction. I can either go to the left or to the right. Actually, this means construction is happening to the left and to the right. Green signs always relate to the highway. I'm not seeing these. Like, seriously, I'm not. I don't know. It's a maple leaf. It's Trans Canada number one highway. Brown signs contain tourist information. Like this picnic area rest sign that Arun can't comprehend. What does it look like? Like a bench. Yellow signs are always cautionary, like this one, meaning sharp right turn ahead. Uneven road? It looks like a taxi thing. I don't know. Like, I've, I've, these signs, I've never seen them. He should have seen this one. What the I, an axe. A dead end. Don't go there. X. A cross walks up ahead. Of all the folks in rehab, Jacob has the best understanding of signs. But Arun... I don't know. ...just gets three out of ten. And Angelina's worse. Is it a railroad ahead? It is, isn't it? Angelina can't even recognize... I don't know. The sign for an upcoming school bus stop. What the f is that? I don't know. Angelina recognized the picnic table, but that's all. That's gonna make me look like an idiot, man. You can make a car move sideways, but the more we do this show, the more we realize that's a skill bad drivers just don't understand. The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is learning how to shift a car laterally using a technique we call the S-turn. The course for this challenge is an S, and the car for this challenge is an S-Car Go, made by Nissan. The goal of the challenge is to make the S-Car Go go around this S of cars while facing forwards. It's strange, but what's even stranger about the S-Cargo is that there's no steering wheel on the left-hand side. It's a, a right-hand drive. It doesn't really matter which side of the car the wheel is on because the principle of making a car move laterally is still the same. I want to slide to my right, so I do an S-turn. I go to my right as far as I can, about halfway. Then I go to my left as far as I can. And I stop. To slide even farther away, I do another S turn in reverse. I go back as far as I can halfway. Then I go to my left and I back up as far as I can all the way. Now, it's simply a matter of repeating the process. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's how you make a car move laterally. When drivers can go forward into that next part of the challenge, they're ready to slide the other way. This time, we do it to the left. 
slithering through the entire back and forth course. Just look at this escargot. Takes me 27 minutes. Now let's see if Canada's worst drivers can figure out how to make a car move laterally. Arun started five minutes ago. Go back, go all the way back. Have I moved a little bit? No, you haven't. Why is it not moving anywhere? This S-turn challenge will test drivers' spatial awareness. You just hit the car. Yeah, I'm on the accident. It will reveal steering flaws. Now which way do I go? And it will show Arun's bad habit of not knowing which gear he's in. That's not reverse. I, I was thinking it was in reverse. You're hitting every single thing. Arun is slowly shuffling around the S. This is crazy. But he wants to quit. Arun's mental computer has completely crashed. I don't know how to get out of this place. Crystal is next. I'll be more relaxed if I have a cigarette. This is a hard thing to do smoking. It sure is. Crystal learns the S-turn concept. Like that? Yes. But her execution is atrocious. Fudge. Did I hit it? Yeah. Making her way around the S, Crystal thinks she's doing great. I see the finish line. <laughs> I see a driver in denial. Oh, wait. You hit it. No, I didn't. You did. Crystal needs a reality check. I think based on this uh, last S-curve challenge that uh, I am going home very, very soon. Angelina spends the first five minutes going forwards and then backwards in the same spot. Absolutely nothing is being achieved here. After 15 minutes, she's getting bored. So you get the concept now, though? No. And after half an hour... Oh, what? Something is just... <laughs> Angelina has better things to do. Hello? Hey, how's it going? She's having trouble doing this task, and she takes a phone call. You just hit that car while you were on the phone. Hitting cars is nothing to Angelina. On a scale of 1 to 10, I did a 9.5 on the S thingy. And on a scale of 1 to 10, I think she did about a 6. Are you drunk? After the break, the S-Turn Challenge concludes. Really, I'm sick and tired of looking like an idiot on TV. Canada's worst drivers are learning how to slowly slide a car sideways by doing S-Turns. Jacob is next behind the wheel. Oh, I'm touching something already. Jacob hits a few obstacles. Cool. And he gets frustrated. Yes, and I'm trying to remain patient. But compared to his past explosions, <gasps> this is a big improvement. Wait for a sec. Oh. oh, man. I smell like cheese dog. <laughs> That's the smell of a dying punk attitude. And I got through the whole thing without losing my temper, so definitely an 8.5. Mike hasn't passed a single challenge in our rehab center. Really, I'm sick and tired of looking like an idiot on TV, you know? Sadly, Mike can't do an effective S-turn nerve-wracking until Jody comes to his rescue I'm gonna have to go like this Mike what do you mean for the first two-thirds of this course Mike relies on Jody's advice I figured everybody else is using their using their uh, their nominators for help why can't I and for the final third of the course 
Dude, I'm honestly just following your instructions. Mike still needs help. He's going. He's going. Mike needs to think for himself. If, you know, you weren't helping me, I really don't think that I would have been able to do it. Father Giles is at the halfway mark. Halfway, halfway, halfway. This mild-mannered priest halfway. has figured out how to do a nice S-turn okay, halfway. by repeating a mantra. Halfway, halfway, halfway. When Father Giles halfway is all the way done, he's learned the lesson all the way. What I learned from the S-curve challenge is indeed uh, patience is a virtue. Melissa is waiting for Will's inevitable advice. Actually, I'll just shut up and you do it. Okay. Will stays shut up. No, you don't want to go that way. For two whole seconds. And less than a minute later, he's grabbing the wheel. So you're not cranking the wheel enough, oh, Melissa. Yeah. Any driver with a passenger this abusive. Well. Don't crank the wheel. Okay. Like, I don't understand how you don't understand that. Should ask that passenger to get out of the vehicle. Everybody knows that. That's like part of driver's training. Melissa has been trained to never talk back. When we argue, it gets, makes things worse, I think. Yeah. Since arriving in rehab, Stop turning the wheel when you look backwards. Will's behavior as a passenger... Turn the wheel. ...has been beyond disturbing. Don't stall it. For Melissa to become a better driver... Oh, so... Monkey. It's Will who will have to make the biggest change. Are you retarded? Hey, Will, how you doing? How bad are you? Will knows this meeting is about his rude behavior as a passenger. I don't know what it is. It's like getting in the car. It's just like a... That's what's going on. I also honestly don't think that you grasp how ugly it is. Yeah. So, let's go. Our psychologist has recommended letting Will hear exactly how he sounds. Let's listen to how you talk to Melissa. Why, why do you crank the wheel like that? Straighten the wheel! Just out of curiosity, how would you react if somebody said, Straighten the wheel! To you. Oh, man, I'd flip right out. I would. Let's listen to some more. No, I don't really want to. Yeah, let's listen to some more. Don't crank the wheel. But I seriously, I give up, man. There's there's no hope for you. There isn't. There's no hope whatsoever. Are you retarded? Are you serious? I honestly did not realize it was that bad. To make sure Will's able to remember how bad it is. I'm going to uh, give you that CD. I can't believe that's me. I'm just so in shock. Like, I just, I can't even speak. Will is ready to admit that for Melissa to become a better driver, he's the one who has to change. Stop being such an Like, stop. Instead of putting her down, praise her. When we come back, it's our annual Eye of the Needle Challenge. Ah! The lousiest motorists in the country oh, are all unsure about where exactly the edges of their vehicles are. To teach Canada's worst drivers exactly where their sides and corners are, their next challenge is to run through our annual Eye of the Needle course. And this year, they'll be doing it in a lowrider pickup truck. This year, there are four arches the drivers have to get through, and the voyage won't be automatic. This lowrider pickup is a stick shift. So, they have to go from first gear to second gear to third gear to fourth gear while they travel through the arches. <laughs> to do the eye of the needle, the secret is to look where you want to go. I want to go through the final arch at 70 kilometers an hour. 
So I'm going to look through the arches, never at them. And when I learned to drive, I looked right in front of the car. But since I started hosting the show, they said, don't look right in front of the car. Look where you want to go, far away ahead. And that's what I do. Now I don't look at the arches, I just look where I want to go, and everything works out perfectly. That is the most important lesson in driving. Look where you want to go, and you'll go there. Now let's see how Canada's worst drivers do. Arun knows the trick to this challenge. Yeah, I should just look straight into the fourth one. When Arun starts, though... What kind of start was that? He looks straight at the first pylon. <laughs> and then it gets worse. No! Yikes! Arun steered exactly where he looked. And you stopped looking where you wanted to go and you started looking at the obstacle, didn't you? Yes, I did. Father Giles drove a stick shift in his younger days. Today, he shifts gears with ease and smoothly accelerates through the first two arches. Headed for the third arch, Father Giles stays focused and he makes it to the required 70k an hour. A perfect run. Right on! Right on! <laughs> I did I didn't even touch nothing! Father Giles is clearly improving. Would you have been able to do that before you came to rehab? No. There you go. <laughs> The question of Melissa's run is, can Will be a positive influence? You can do it, Melissa. So far, so good. Excellent, that's perfect. You're doing so awesome, Melissa. This is deadly. Melissa's driving is as positive as Will. There you go, perfect. You're doing awesome, Melissa. Melissa hasn't hit anything yet, but the final arch. Awesome has less clearance than the first three. <laughs> Melissa doesn't do a single thing wrong. And Will, not a single negative comment. Nope. And look at the results. Yep, that's the beginning of the change, it is. Last episode, Crystal had an eye exam. Did I break it? Oh, son of a... In that exam, Crystal learned... I have no, this, um, what's that called, peripheral? Vision. Yeah. Crystal's right eye only sees what's directly in front of it. I did it again, eh? And again. And again. Oh, my God. And for a fifth time. It is your vision. It's that side every time, isn't it? Crystal knows. She needs corrective lenses. You own a pair of glasses now? Yeah, but I don't wear them. What does it say on the back of your license? That I shouldn't wear glasses. Not should. I need corrective eyewear. I had 13 accidents in the last 15 years, and that's when I stopped wearing my glasses was 15 years ago. Jacob has confidence. I should be able to do it, because I can drive the stick. Jacob can drive a stick shift, but... Oops. It's not pretty. And Jacob doesn't steer so smoothly either. But he gets through without hitting. I did it. Jacob thinks he'll graduate. I'm going home. <laughs> Angelina is up next. Come on, Angelina. You can do this bad boy good. Angelina thinks she's in third gear, but she's only in first. Fourth? Now she's in second gear, but she's almost melting the engine trying to get up to 70k an hour. For the millionth time, 
Angelina is not an actor. I just did the eye of the needle and I did so, so good. I only demolished two things. Mike Butt is the last driver. I'm going to be fixating on the, uh, on the gaps. Here at 70. Mike's at 70 before the first arch. And headed for the second arch, he's looking straight through the middle of it. Perfect. Mike finally passes the challenge. And that's how you do that. After the break, one of Canada's worst drivers will graduate back onto public roads. Before we decide which one of Canada's worst drivers should graduate this episode, the experts want to speak only with Melissa to talk to her about Will's effect when he sits in the passenger seat. Do you know that I took a drive with Will? Yes, I do. I took a drive with Will. Let's listen to how you talk to Melissa as you drive. So he could hear exactly what he says to Melissa. The f are you going? Straighten the wheel! Why do you crank the wheel like that? Melissa, watch your mirrors. Don't crank the wheel! He went back after that and he said he cried for like 15 minutes he's like i can't believe i did that to you so i really honestly think he's realizing what he did to me if will does realize he should have a plan for changing his behavior <laughs> i promise to be like a totally different person like you know what i mean instead of criticizing her praise her i think that says it all it's time to choose this episode's graduate. I'll just read out who we've got, and you tell me if you think they should graduate. Arun? No way. Fine. Crystal? No. Punk rocker Jacob. Jacob is my pick for tonight's graduate, and Dr. Gambora's choice is Melissa. I didn't even think we were going to have any other candidates, to be honest. I think Melissa just had such a transformational experience, and, and more so her husband. Kim? Well, I think Melissa's ready. Philippe thinks Jacob is better than Melissa. I still think we could teach her a lot more. I still think Jacob should graduate, which means the tie-breaking vote belongs to Peter. So, which one of you should get your license back and be allowed to hit the public roads again? Our experts say that the worst person here has made the greatest transformation. And I'm not even talking about a driver. Will, I'm talking about you, buddy. Your positive attitude adjustment has already made Melissa a much safer driver. And Melissa? We're positive now that you have all the tools you need to be the good driver that your family needs. So you're this season's second graduate. Congratulations. Take your driver's license. Go home to your family. Thank you. Melissa wound up in driver rehab. Back up, for sakes. Only because of her explosive common law husband. Yes! I came here not knowing that I was a bad passenger and I'm leaving a better person. Melissa is leaving a better driver. She can operate a stick shift now, she can parallel park, and she can control a vehicle at high speeds. Awesome. When I came here, my confidence was down here, and now I'm leaving, and it's up here. It's just amazing. It's a good feeling. Thank you. There's still a six-pack of drivers here, and one of them is Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver... We teach the nominees how to do donuts. 
They show us exactly how jerky their driving is. Ah! Oh my god! And when we add distractions into the mix, hey, that's a nice freaking car. The wheels really come off. Ah! 